Hello everybody, welcome to another video. It's wonderful to see you again. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, you can do so right now by hitting the button down below. That helps me to grow and reach people in that ever-changing, ever-mysterious YouTube algorithm that we content creators all have to live with. Thank you so much for that. Hit that like button as well if you enjoy this video and hit that notification bell to ensure you never miss a video. You can also become a member of the channel by clicking the join button and seeing the various levels of membership that you can choose from. Thank you so much. Anyway, with the housekeeping done, let's get to the content of today's video. And it is all about Copilot readiness. Microsoft 365 Copilot, big topic at the moment, hard to avoid. It's everywhere that you look if you are in the Microsoft 365 world. It's so important to be ready for it though. How do you get your organization ready for Copilot? It's all to do with looking at your data protection first and foremost, enabling things like DLP, sensitivity labels, uh, and making sure that your SharePoint permissions for sites are absolutely spot on, absolutely appropriate before you enable Copilot and assign those licenses to your users. So this is what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna go through the whole process and you'll be armed with everything that you need to make sure that your organization is ready for that M365 Copilot journey. Stay tuned, it's coming up. So the best place to start when looking to secure your Microsoft 365 tenant in readiness for M365 Copilot is to get your data ready for search. And what is meant by this essentially is to leverage the tools within Microsoft Purview to ensure that your users have just enough access to only what they need, only what they are authorized for. And this is done with tools in Microsoft Purview, such as data loss prevention policies, where you can ensure that data is protected against accidental uh, loss uh, and leakage, and of course, uh, information protection sensitivity labels, which uh, again does a, a similar sort of thing. With these labels, you can apply classification to your files, to your emails, to your Teams chats, lots of other things, and ensure that only the authorized people, whether inside or outside of the organization, are able to access uh, particular documents and emails, have the permissions for it with the encryption settings and the content marking settings that are applied via the labels. It may be that you are already doing this sort of stuff in your organization, if so, great, you're ahead of the game. Uh, if not, then check out my videos on these subjects, which I will put cards to throughout these, uh, throughout this video, uh, things like sensitivity labels, DLP, and uh, then you'll be in a great position to start your co-pilot rollout. So let's take a look at the learn.microsoft com documentation there's a really good guide for getting started with copilot for m365 and it gives you the usual sort of opening remarks about what it is i.e an ai powered productivity tool that uses large language models and integrates your data with the microsoft graph and microsoft 365 apps so this article is going to cover how you can prepare your organization for Copilot, and the steps are in three primary phases. Number one, optimizing for search. We've talked about that already a little bit in terms of ensuring that your data is uh, optimized with Microsoft Purview principles and, uh, and tools. Uh, number two, update channels and apps. And three, importantly, provision Copilot licenses. Before you begin, there are some prerequisites that you must uh, be aware of. You've got to have one of these subscriptions here. 
uh, to purchase Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. And you can purchase the uh, licenses through the M365 Admin Center on the Purchase Services page. Just a little recap on optimizing for search and Copilot provides the ability for users to find and access their content through natural language prompting. And Copilot ensures data security and privacy by adhering to existing obligations and integrating with your organization's policies, utilizing Microsoft Graph content with the same access controls as other M365 services. So what this basically means is, if you didn't have these protections in place, if you didn't have DLP sensitivity labeling, all of these controls and policies in place, then Copilot would have for each user unlimited access to uh, all data and would return that uh, in a in an unfiltered way, and, an, and I might add a very inappropriate way. So it's equally important to ensure that users have the access that they need, uh, just to particular SharePoint sites as well. So check SharePoint permissions, uh, permissions to Teams, uh, Teams, <laughs> if you like, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So that when users who are assigned a Copilot license are doing Copilot uh, related activities and searches, then they're only getting results in line with what they have permissions to. And this is all about applying the principles of just enough access. So from the SharePoint Admin Center, you are able to review SharePoint site access to check permissions and access to ensure the data is secure. And you should always prioritize sites that contain sensitive information. Again, and I just touched on this briefly when we opened up the video, configure advanced policies with purview. And if we expand this here, we can see information protection sensitivity labels here are called out. So in that compliance portal, create those labels by navigating to the labels tab to customize policies that best fit your data sensitivity classifications. And you'll get to this point by knowing your data. Understanding your data is key to the beginning of that journey. Not one for this video, I have other videos that cover all this. Uh, you can also configure auto labeling to do that, and you can configure DLP policies as well. Additionally, it's important to know about audit Copilot activity in Microsoft Purview, and all activity from Copilot for M365 can be discoverable using content search in the Purview portal for audit and review. So you can initiate an audit and you can apply retention policies to retain content in prompts and responses based on your organization requirements. E-discovery and communication compliance policies are also supported for Copilot. I've done a video in relation to e-discovery and deleting um, content from Copilot after searching for that. So you can check that out. I'll link to it. Um, so lots of good stuff uh, that you can do across purview in relation to getting uh, your organization ready for search. Update channels. What's this one all about? So. Copilot for M365 will follow Microsoft 365 apps standard practice for deployment and updates being available in all update channels except for semi-annual enterprise channel. Preview channels include current channel preview and beta channel. Production channels include current channel and then monthly enterprise channel. And preview channels are a great option to validate the product before rolling out to the rest of your organization. So be sure to check out this document. There's a lot of great stuff in here and you can look at all of these overviews on, uh, on channels and, and the best approach. But broadly speaking, Microsoft recommend the current channel as it provides your users with the newest Microsoft 365 app features as soon as they are ready and provides the best experience for a fast moving product like Copilot for M365. If you need more predictability of when these newer Microsoft 365 app features are released each month, then you could go for the monthly enterprise channel. Okay, and then provision Copilot licenses. 
uh, for Copilot for Microsoft 365. After you've prepared your organization for Copilot, you can manage Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. That was a lot of Microsoft 365s in one sentence. <laughs> You can assign licenses to individual users or to groups of users, as well as reassign licenses to other users. Okay, so there we are. There's more details in here. Uh, configure settings for Copilot as an admin. You can manage Microsoft Copilot experiences for your organization by using the controls available in the M365 Admin Center. You can view the status of Copilot license assignments access the latest information on Copilot, manage data security and compliance controls, and submit feedback on behalf of users, configure plugins and permissions, and enable the use of web data as grounding data in Copilot. So that's really cool stuff indeed. And you can plan for deployment and measure adoption, impact, and sentiment. And this section tells you all about accelerating adoption to get value, recommending an approach of adoption of Copilot by leveraging adoption, by identifying users across various business groups in your organization, ideally with high usage of existing M365 features, which you can identify by reviewing usage metrics in the 365 admin center. These users should be assigned Copilot for M365 licenses and be onboarded using the resources available on the Microsoft Adoption Hub. And as the users get more comfortable using Copilot, they should be able to speak to how they use it best and where it's providing the most value for them. And this is going to provide you with product champions, which are essential in this process. And these champions can help other users adopt Copilot across the organization. And with your established community of early adopters or champions, they can best speak to their peers rather than you within the organization and contextualize the value of Copilot to best suit their needs. Amazing stuff. So let's have a little bit of a look at what this looks like from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So in the M365 Admin Center, you go to Setup, and you would normally find the required option under the Apps and Email section. But because, as disclosed in a previous video, I do not have Copilot licensing in my tenant, I don't see the options, so I can't show it to you in a live fashion. However, I do have some screenshots that I've put together of what you can expect, and we'll go to those now. So here we go, under apps and email, you can go through this wizard, get ready for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And as you start to go through it, it tells you all of the readiness steps, the prerequisites, that you will need to consider for using Copilot in your organization. If you know that these are already met, then you can move on to the next step, which is the licensing. But you need to consider Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise. These must be deployed to your users, which seamlessly integrates with Microsoft 365 Copilot and applications such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Teams. So make sure that you've got all those lovely apps deployed. Entra, Microsoft Entra is essential. Your users must have a Accounts in Entra, formerly known as Azure AD. So make sure that that is taken care of. OneDrive, some features in Microsoft 365 Copilot, such as file restore and OneDrive management, require that users have a OneDrive account. So look to make sure that that is all set up and ready. And of course, Microsoft Outlook. Uh, 365 Copilot works with the new Outlook for Windows, which is currently in preview, and users can toggle to the new Outlook uh, by selecting Try the new Outlook in the top right-hand corner of the Outlook on the web interface. The next slide just shows a bit more scroll down on this Prepare Your Organization, and Microsoft Teams is the next one. So to use M365 Copilot with Teams, you need to be using the Teams desktop client. And the Microsoft Teams setup guide will assist you in configuring the popular Teams settings, including obviously things like external access, guest access, team creation permissions, and so on, as well as providing instructions for installing Teams on desktop, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and of course, mobile 
platforms. Loop is also something to be considered. I love Microsoft Loop. Uh, to use M365 Copilot within Microsoft Loop, you've got to have Loop enabled for your tenant, so you can find out more in the wizard about how to do that if you haven't already done so. And finally, semantic index for Copilot. This is a new capability in M365, E3, and E5. Uh, this is a sophisticated map of your user and company data. It uses conceptual understanding to determine your intent and help you find what you need. The semantic index for Microsoft 365 Copilot is critical to getting relevant, actionable responses to prompts in Microsoft 365 Copilot, and it enhances enterprise search results for E3 and E5 customers, whether they are using Copilot or not. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with all of these prerequisites, and you will be good to go to the next step. And that next step is to license your Microsoft 365 Copilot users. Assign licenses to your users or groups. A uh, fairly straightforward step, but obviously don't assign those licenses until you are absolutely ready to do so. Very, very important. And then the next step is to promote the M365 Copilot features to your users. This can be done in the form of a email announcement. Uh, and you can have Microsoft send emails to your users, set your organization's preferences in Microsoft communication to users, and you can send to those who are being licensed for uh, Copilot, or you can send an email to uh, the following uh, specific recipients as well, which is an optional step. And then that's done. You're going to be finished from there. You've completed the Copilot setup and you get some links to additional resources that Microsoft offers, to the message center, to the roadmap. Very, very much encourage you to uh, bookmark that roadmap uh, to see what is coming. You just know that there's gonna be more added to Copilot as time moves forward. We've barely had Copilot for a blink of an eye. It can do so much already, but you know there's gonna be so much more to come. And there you go, that's it. I think you'll agree it's massively important to ensure that you're prepared for Copilot in your organization. I'm already hearing some horror stories, I have to admit, of organizations who've jumped in at the deep end, haven't learned their lesson from uh, the days of COVID when Teams was rushed out, and admittedly that was, was what it was. Uh, there wasn't much we could do about that. But there is plenty we can do about this. Don't dive into Copilot without being ready. Ensure that your data is ready for search. Ensure that you are uh, getting your champions groups all set up, ensure that you're not assigning licenses here, there, and everywhere without giving it some forethought. Critical. Well, there we go. That's about it for another video. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Consider joining the channel as well to become a member. I would be so grateful if you did, and I'll see you next time on another video. In the meantime, you take care of yourselves. See you soon. Bye-bye.